We're Eclectical Engineering, and we're here with Mark Rober, who asked us to help him design and build the world's largest Nerf gun. So in my video, we compared the power of this versus the power of this using just the air system. But now we want to see what happens if we increase the firepower and replace the air system with a black powder cannon. Ah, so we're out here in the middle of nowhere where there's no possibility of hitting an innocent bystander. No innocent bystander, with the exception of these three unfortunate fellows. Now we've taken out the pneumatic air system and the foam darts and replaced them with a black powder cannon along with these wooden dowels and 3D printed projectiles. Now let's see how these melons fare up against the world's largest Nerf gun. We bought a few watermelons to use as targets. Look at my melons! <laughs> we placed them on the hill which served as our backstop in case the wind projectile goes clean through the watermelon. To be as scientific as possible, we first recorded the damage the watermelon took with your standard issue Nerf gun at point blank range. With minimal damage sustained, we pulled out the big gun and positioned our Nerf cannon directly in front of the melons. We're about to wreck these melons. Oh. I can't hear shit. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, so three and a half grams wasn't too impressive. We still have a huge chunk of watermelon. We're gonna ramp it up to five grams and try to obliterate it. Five grams of black powder. Your face, man. We're gonna be doing a direct comparison between the pneumatic air system and black powder. We have two projectiles of the same mass and we're gonna see which one shoots farther. All right, that wasn't that bad for compressed air. You can see our gun in the distance. That's probably uh, 125 yards. We're gonna see how black powder does now. It didn't go as far. It didn't go as far. What's this bullshit? Oh man. All right. Well, it didn't go quite as far as the pneumatic projectile, uh, but probably that's because a lot of the energy was directed at blowing the back out of this thing. And in addition, the fishing weights we had in there to give it mass ripped out of the back. So all that inertia that it had was lost in flight. It is cool though, because we have a nice barbecued 3D print. After disposing of all incriminating evidence, we thought we would ask former NASA engineer Mark Rober to further explain the results of our impromptu experiment. So Mark, what exactly happened? I'm glad you asked, Ryan. The reason the air power projectile went farther is because it has greater inertia, which is a fancy way of saying its weight and speed was greater than the black powder projectile, which had most of its weight blown out before it even went very far. Think about throwing a baseball versus a wiffle ball. So even though you throw them at the same speed, the baseball will go further because it weighs more, and so the drag from the air has less of an effect. Another reason it didn't go as far is because the flight was unstable and it was tumbling. This is why a spiraling football will go farther than a football that is thrown sucky. In the case of our projectile, this instability came from the fact that the weight wasn't concentrated at the front. And that's Aerodynamics 101. Thanks, Mark. Be sure to check out his channel for more cool science videos and life hacks. For more engineering shenanigans, please subscribe. That really helps us continue making more videos for you guys. Oh,